All right, so we're going to go over an example uh, about for loops and while loops. And the example is going to be in the context of looking at a penny reaching terminal velocity. So the question is, how high can we drop a penny before it reaches its terminal velocity, which is uh, also known as the speed at which air resistance will not let the penny go any faster. Um, and we're going to solve this with a for loop and a while loop. So if you look at the picture on the right here, we have our building. We're dropping a penny out of it. The penny's going to keep increasing velocity until it reaches the terminal velocity. And we want to know how high can we drop the penny and still have it accelerate up until the point where it hits its terminal velocity. And luckily for us, we know that that is 15 meters per second. And we also have our equation for motion, which says velocity equals the square root of 2 times acceleration due to gravity times our elevation. So we want to plug in 15 here. Or excuse me, we want to figure out what y we need to get 15 here. Now we can solve that with algebra, but uh, just for a simple example with loops, uh, we're going to solve it using MATLAB. So the first thing we want to do is open up a new script file in MATLAB. And we're going to do the for loop first. So let's save our script file as penny for loop. Okay. And we always want to start with some good comments. So we're going to say solving terminal velocity with for loop. Okay. So let's start by putting some of our parameters in. Uh, the first one being our terminal velocity, v term, and that's equal to 15 meters per second. We have our acceleration due to gravity, g, which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And we also want to set up a large matrix of possible elevations y, so that we can run the velocity equation over all these y's and then go back and figure out which one corresponds to our v-terminal of 15 meters per second. So we'll use the lin space command for that. And the first thing we want to do is figure out how many elevations we want to test. And I'll say let's test a thousand elevations. So we use the lin space command. We're going to start at zero, go up to, I don't know, 50 meters, and we'll have n values in between. All right, so all our parameters are set up. Now comes the for loop. So the syntax for the for loop, we say for i equals 1 to some number n. So that means our for loop is going to run n times because we're starting at 1, spaced by 1, and running to n. And we'll put our end in right there for syntax. So right now our for loop would do nothing and run a thousand times. But we want our for loop to do something, so we want it to compute velocity at each y. So we do square root 2 times y. And as we're going through the for loop, the for loop's going to change i every time we go through it. So we're going to want to reflect that in our equation. So we say yi and then times g. And that should complete our equation. We can double check. And sure enough. That's what our equation says. So this for loop will run through a thousand times and keep moving through our big vector y, increasing the elevation every step. And to figure out when our elevation equals v terminal, we're just going to simply plot the results. And we'll plot velocity versus elevation. And we'll do it as red dots. And of course, we want to label our axes x will be velocity in meters per second, y will be elevation in meters, and we'll run our code and see if it works. So we've run through the for loop, it's already done, and if we look at our workspace, we have a, a vector y, which we wanted to create, that's a thousand, time, thousand elements long, dictated by n. And then every step of the way, we calculate v. So we should get 1,000 elements in v as well, because we're putting it in the i slot in, in v. 
and I ends up going from 1 to 1,000, so it should be 1,000 long. We end up with a graph, and our terminal velocity we said is 15, and so we want to figure out what elevation we're at. So let's zoom in where velocity is 15. And we can grab our data cursor here and click on the point that looks pretty close to 15. And when x is equal to 15, elevation is 11.46 meters. So that was solving with a for loop. The next step is to solve with a while loop because, well, that's what the problem told us to do. Now, a while loop is really slick because it will keep running until we meet a certain condition. And so in this case, we want to keep running our, essentially our same for loop here. And then we want to stop once V becomes equal to our terminal velocity of 15. So we don't have to run a thousand cases and then go back and look at it. We can just have MATLAB stop when we want it to. So let's just copy the front half of this code and change this to say a while loop. And then save our file again. And the while. And while loops look pretty similar to for loops. So we'll say while, and we're going to compute v. We want to keep computing v until it's it is uh, equal to v term. So we want the while loop to run as long as v is less than v terminal because we know we can't get greater than v terminal. We're always going to be less than it until we hit terminal velocity. So again, I'm going to type in my end right away so I don't forget. And we just want to, again, type in our equation. So v equals square root of 2 times g times y. And we'll have to go through y element by element again. And so the one problem we have here is we don't have any index i. So what we have to do is essentially make our own. So we'll start with i equals 0. And every time we go through our while loop, we want to add 1 to i. So it keeps going through our elevation vector y. So i equals i plus 1. We'll keep increasing it every time we go through. And the last thing we have to remember is that we don't have v defined in our code anywhere. So let's just start initially at v equals 0. And we'll compute it through here and end up with whatever elevation that v is equal to 15. And then finally, we'll say display elevation is v. And we run our code. It goes through and comes up with elevation is so the one mistake I made was I displayed velocity instead of elevation. So if we display the i -th elevation, then we get elevation is 11.5, which is very similar to what we got from our for loop. And if you want to do the problem algebraically, I'm sure you get roughly the same answer. So that's how you use a while loop and a for loop in a simple problem. And for more complex problems, you just got to apply the same concepts, uh, and you'll be fine.